What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Back to School interview. Each Wednesday at noon throughout the month of August, we have been posting interviews with some amazing women in jazz who are all music students in college. So thank you so much for joining us once again for today's episode. Today, we have the incredible Stephanie Tataiwa, who is a senior at the Eastman School of Music, and she is studying jazz, saxophone, and music teaching and learning. So welcome, Steph. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you've been up to, how you've been liking Eastman so far? Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you for having me. And this is such it's, it's such an incredible organization, and we all appreciate what you're doing. So oh, thanks. Uh, thank you for <laughs> doing all of these. Yeah, so I'm Stephanie. Like Olivia said, I'll be a senior at Eastman. Um, I'm 21 right now, and um, currently in Rochester. And we actually just had the Rochester Jazz Fest which we got to experience for the, or I got to experience for the first time, finally as a senior, because it was canceled the past two years with COVID. And Olivia and I got to play in the same group, New York Chill, which was a lot of fun. Yeah, um, I've been really loving it here at Eastman. Um, honestly, basically the whole school year is kind of like the winter in Rochester. You know, as soon as we get here, maybe we have like, two months that's you know pretty nice weather and then the whole rest of the year is kind of like the winter season um which is cool for people who like (laughs) snow and cold weather you know and also just that is one of the reasons why the students here get to really know each other um and also with the faculty members because we're kind of all stuck inside the whole time you know (laughs) we just you know uh we're always in class together hanging out indoors most of the times but it gives us an opportunity to really get close with each other so that's something really nice about eastman and um there's you know the classical department here is amazing too so we get to make friends with the classical students also and just such a you know wealth of knowledge from all uh, from every angle at the school so it's it's a really great learning um environment here yeah that's so true and um like you mentioned the rochester jazz festival um which is an international festival and it's really interesting to see all these amazing musical groups come through rochester and it must be exciting too as an eastman student to get to see so many new faces around the city of rochester because it's so special and we got to play like you said in the same ensemble and could you talk a little bit more about your experience at the festival and you know how was it as a student getting able to attend and you know get to meet so many new people can you talk about that a little bit more yeah sure so as eastman students um we have the opportunity to play put together some student combos and play on the gibbs street stage which is a great location as part of the rochester jazz fest because it's kind of like right in the center where everyone walks by um so it's really fun um because usually um at eastman the the performing venues are mostly in the school in rochester Mm -hmm. sometimes there's some you know jam sessions or there are there are jam sessions in you know, outside of the school too, but it's just really nice during the Jazz Fest where people from outside of Rochester, like from all over the place, they come gather here and then our student groups can actually perform for people outside of Rochester, outside of the school. So that is a really cool opportunity for all of us. So that was super exciting. Yeah, that's super cool. Um, yeah, and I don't know, like, what are your experiences with, you know, like staying motivated when you're practicing during the, like you said, the long winters and, you know, still like keeping up that collaboration um, with people? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Motivation, I've, I've, I always feel it's like such, such a, I don't know, a complicated topic. You know, like sometimes you have such a great flow of motivation where you can just get anything done you feel like. And then other times it's like, eh. (laughs) (laughs) But honestly, 
honestly, during the school year, it's no problem for me because, uh, you know, once we're always just so busy with schoolwork and especially for me, or at least man, the theory and the ear training um, courses are really pretty intense and we, but intense, but really great in that, um, especially with the jazz theory course, it's not so assignment based, but it's more project based, project or composition based, composition projects based that we get to learn about the theory, but put that into practice by writing, trying to, our, trying to write our own pieces and actually putting together a jazz theory combo where you get to explore with those ideas. So that has been like one of the biggest motivations for me throughout the school year. Um, that and then also big band and then the, the small combo which we call JPW at Eastman. Um, so those are definitely the three main, you know, motivation sources for me during the school year, which is really great. Um, and over the summer or over the long break, that's when I have to try to get myself to come up with my own projects or mm-hmm. just do, get myself to do something to yeah. stay motivated, you know. But it's an, you probably feel this too, but um, it's like really tricky to find a good balance of how much to rest and then how much to push yourself and do stuff because yeah. like yeah like doing non-music stuff is so important too and just you know maybe breathing and living life yeah and sometimes you can you feel like inspired like out of nowhere when you're not like shedding and then you just like makes makes you want to shed again or something for sure. Yeah. What are some of your favorite like non-music activities that you do that help you um, take breaks and also inspire you to to get back to the saxophone? Yeah, I love just seeing nature. Like I love walking around. I love running and just walking around. So, well, when I'm running, I'm kind of just like, <gasps> you know, <laughs> so I can't always like think about non-music stuff because I'm always just like listening to music when running and that's when I kind of try to learn tunes um I often do that but when I'm not running I walk a lot and I I like writing lyrics a lot and for those lyrics like I've gotten so many inspirations from just looking at trees and observing birds and things like that especially after quarantine season I took a lot of walks and it made me me kind of absorb just like the little things in life I feel like yeah so true Mm -hmm. yeah and I think too like as as college students it's so important too to find that balance of you know spending a lot of time and all your energy towards the music but also finding things that are not necessarily music related but can help you get back to the horn and you know inspire you to write something new um and, you know, I think that's important to keep in mind, too, for, for new students that are just starting. Um, are there any other things that maybe you wish you knew before starting music school? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, this is relating to what we were just saying, but, you know, it's so important to have, like, good work ethic, of course. Um, but also along with that, not just getting in your own head about you know, just got to do this, got to do this in music school. But also just really focusing on, like, the fun. Because at the end of the day, we're doing music because we just find so much enjoyment in it. And you don't want to, like, ruin that. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, like, it is important to, like, work hard and work. I think maybe that's, like, a given. But, like, you know, got to always remind yourself to have you know, remember to have fun with the music. And also, like, one thing I, I've i always felt, especially in my, like, first two years in school, was that, you know, like, I felt kind of like this pressure to like the same kind of music or same uh, musician or recordings as my peers at Eastman. Um, but you don't have to feel that way. Like, you, ha- you can just trust 
what you really feel passionate about. You don't have to like the exact same musician as everyone else. And you don't have to doubt yourself because you like something different. Like that's actually like good if you like something different because then that reflects in your playing and could be, could be, you know, something that makes you unique. So that I think I wish, um, I knew and I could just, I wish I could just be like, no, it's okay. I'm just gonna dig what I dig and go with that. Yeah. And also just like not being afraid to explore with creativity, I think. Yeah. yeah. I think that's something really, yeah, like makes your playing and probably as a musician, artist as a whole special to just go with your own creativity. Yeah, definitely. I, I totally agree with that. And I think those are all such great things to keep in mind, too. Um, are there any other pieces of advice or, you know, maybe like a really good piece of advice that you heard from a teacher or a mentor or a peer from school um, as like a little final tip or trick to, to pass on to other students? Yeah, sure. I think I have like two. So one of them um, is how I'm feeling. So like not being afraid to put yourself out there and just go play because i was always really afraid to just you know let go of all these like scared feelings um and go to jams and stuff because doing jazz you feel it's so tricky in that you feel like you're always being judged for every single thing you play as opposed to classical music or something where you i feel like you can really just practice that piece and then people you know i don't know it's just like totally different especially mm -hmm. if you're starting from classical or something um but it doesn't really matter don't think too don't worry too much about how others might be you know listening to you if it if you're gonna like burn and crash then don't go but like as long as you feel like relatively comfortable then just that's if you play once then that's just gonna like be an exponential growth of how much you how much more you want to play usually I feel like and then another thing this um I got from my sax professor Charles Bill whom Olivia knows too yeah <laughs> like he tells me don't be that musician who's always too hard on um, him or herself or themselves because if you know doing music you can't always be like perfect have a perfect performance and if you keep on focusing on that it just ruins the fun and fun for the other musicians and for the audience so you know just yeah enjoying the music I yeah, I, those are two excellent pieces of advice. Um, and I think something that we should all just keep in mind um, moving forward, and especially for music students. Um, so yeah, uh, we are just about out of time. Um, but before we, we wrap up, we'll do some rapid fire questions that have nothing to do with music, but are just fun and help us all get to know you. Um, so cake or pie? Cake. <laughs> <laughs> What is your favorite carbohydrate? <laughs> like oh, um, hard one. E, mm, pasta, yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, what is your favorite type of candy? Ooh, that's a hard one. Mm, candy, well, some kind of dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. I was a milk chocolate person, but recently you like dark chocolate. So true. Um, and would you rather be able to speak every language in the world or talk to and understand animals? Oh, language in the world, I gotta say. Yeah, great answers. So <laughs> that is all we have time for today, everyone. Thank you so much to Stephanie for joining us. If you want to connect with her and see what she's up to, you can follow her on Instagram. I will put it below. Um, I think it's at Saxy underscore Steffi, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. <laughs>
Go check out Stephanie. And if you want to see more from Kiyoshi Jazz, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at Kiyoshi Jazz. You can follow us on our website, kiyoshijazz.org. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. So thank you so much, Stephanie. We're so excited that you were able to join us today. And we hope to see you again soon. Okay.